how's everybody doing? It's Paul from Magpie247 back again. And why bloody not? Because Newcastle returned to action this weekend as we go down to London, North London to be more specific. One of the best away days uh, of the season this Sunday against Spurs. And uh, can Lightning strike twice? Can we get another victory down there? Can Joe Linden keep his fantastic run going? Well, we're all just about to uh, find out. Today, of course, though, was Eddie Howe's press conference for the match down in London. Newcastle on the back of two 1 0 successive away narrow defeats right in stoppage time. Gut wrenching defeats, they really, really were. But competitive in them games, we certainly were. Uh, the lads have been away. They've had um, a week away in Dubai using the fantastic facilities uh, over there. They've came back, they've prepared for this match in the right way. Um, I've heard of lots of people this week talking about this as a free hit, but Eddie Howe in his press conference today certainly downplayed uh, that sort of talk. He said there's no chance of throwaway matches. We're still very much in a relegation battle until we get the points to mathematically seal it. Uh, so, you know, he, he talked about approaching every game uh, in the correct way, like a cup final. And... Um, yeah, so there's, there's going to be no letting the pressure, the foot off the gas, anything else like that until it's mathematically done and sorted. Look, we're, we're, we're virtually there. We're one step safe and we're certainly in a lot better position than many, many others. But we are running towards the latter part, the very end of the season. We've got to be careful. We've got to get the next, you know, the next victory or two victories, whatever it's going to be, just to absolutely... 100% watertight, tight and a duck's fucking ass type job. Make sure that we're in the Premier League next season. Uh, and, uh, you know, I, I think I think we probably are safe now, but it's better to be uh, safe than sorry. And Eddie Howe is talking uh, about this game being very much one that they are targeting for points. They are going there for the win. And that is one of the things that I love about Eddie Howe. There's none of this. Uh, well, it's one of the big teams going up against the big boys and all this sort of thing. There's a, w a winner's mentality. J Jamal LaSalle has been talking about it recently in the week, about a winner's mentality. We're going down there to compete. We're going down there to win. We're going back down there to get some points. So, injury-wise, we'll start on that first of all. He touched upon the fact Kieran Trippier is having a scan today. Um, I think they are very encouraged by the signs that they saw on the aforementioned uh, training camp to Dubai. You know, he was on the bikes, he's stepping up his recovery, things are going in the right way to get him back into action. And he talked about Cameron Trippier being available in a matter of weeks. So to me, um, not trying to do me bloody Mystic Meg sort of job here, but reading between the lines, shall we say, it looks as if we should have Kieran Trippier back in the team within the next couple of weeks. That's a fantastic boost. Um, you know, his leadership qualities, his skill on the pitch, his calmness in defence. It's a problem area fullback for Newcastle when, the, you know, the likes of, uh, you know, himself isn't available. And it's been a notable difference in the second part of the season that, uh, you know, from the early part of the season when teams were just attacking down either side all the time. They're not able to get away with those sort of tricks when you've got Kieran Trippier playing. So it will be great to get him back, no doubt about it. Can't wait to see Kieran Trippier back in the team. And, of course, the uh, set-piece ability and stuff as well. Looking forward for a free kick or two, maybe the odd goal from Kieran Trippier between now and the end of the season. So positive. It's looking good that we will get Kieran Trippier back for plenty of this season. On the other hand, Callum Wilson... Uh, Man, I I'll, I'll love it. He's one of our best strikers that we have had in such a long time. You know, certainly since the 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 CC and uh, Denver Bar days, definitely one of the best strikers we've had in a good good while. Uh, but the lad, the lad's got no luck with injuries whatsoever. Um, again, Eddie Howe today talking about um, this has been a little bit of a setback. It's going to be pushed backwards. It's not going according to plan. He was pictured again over in Dubai, stepping it up doing somewhere, running work, and it looks like there's been a complication or a reaction or something's happened as a result of that. So, um, personally thinking, uh, for me, I think now we'll be looking to see him back this season. I don't think they're going to take the risk. I think they're going to try and get him right. Um, I do think there's going to be changes in the striking department for next season. I see Chris Wood, I see Callum Wilson very much being here. Uh, I think we'll have it probably, you would argue, maybe three or four first choice strikers to be able to pick from the pool of players next season uh, and Callum Wilson will be a squad player in that and look I, I think a healthy Callum Wilson uh, a Callum Wilson without injury 
can offer you so much. He's fantastic. We look so much more dangerous with him in the team, but he just he can't buy a break. Um, I've heard people say sick note and this, that, and the other. It's not the lad's fault at the end of the day. He's desperate to get back and stuff, but the quality is definitely the, you know, there, but... Um, I just don't think we can rely next season on him being there week in, week out. He's somebody who's going to probably be available every season, maybe half a season, something like that. And that's how we've got to start the plan. And you can't do that at the moment with Dwight Gale, who's, again, similar mould. Uh, I don't think he's particularly trusted or rated by the management and the coaches, to be honest. Never gets an opportunity in Newcastle. Never even gets to come off the bench half the time. So it leaves... The, the majority of the strike and uh, work to be done by Chris Wood at the moment. So we have a quite dangerous situation that we just really got Chris uh, Wood up top, who obviously New Zealand's record goal scorer now. He's going to be coming on a massive high after getting that accolade, after getting that achievement. It is fantastic uh, to become your country's all-time leading scorer. So fantastic for Chris Wood. Hopefully he comes back with his confidence, uh, with a bit of swagger, and he comes back and he scores for Newcastle at the weekend. He goes on a bit of a run. That would be great. Obviously, he's got that one goal. It was a good goal. Cracking goal it was. Um, and he's worked tirelessly, tirelessly for Newcastle and for the cause. Um, and he's done so much work in 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 terms of his hold up play and 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 being that focal point of the attack. But he's, look, he needs help. He needs support. We need different options up there. So looking forward to seeing what's going to happen over the summer, especially with the striking situation, because that is where the big bucks are going to be spent. That is where we need we need to add more goals to the team. If we are seriously looking at you know getting up the Premier League table, we need you need goals. Goals win games. Um, and two one uh, you know narrow one nil defeats tell you that over the past couple of games legs have sort of gone. Um, but again, touching back to this Dubai trip, hopefully that's uh, sorted that out. Um, hopefully the lads come back refreshed, uh, reinvigorated like they did when they went to Saudi Arabia previously. Uh, Eddie again today talked about Saint Maximum, saying that he's looked fantastic, literally top of the shop. In training, uh, he obviously scored in the, the practice game at the end of the training camp as well. So, very much looking forward uh, to seeing St. Maximum back to his old self, full of his tricks and turns and goals and uh, chances created and assists and all that sort of thing. So, positive vibes about St. Maximum, positive vibes about Trippier, not so positive about uh, Callum Wilson, but still, everything seemingly rosy in the Newcastle camp. He's talked about recruitment. Plans are already, already underway. That shows you the confidence that they've got that they're going to be a Premier League team next season, no doubt about it. Um, and then he's he, uh, looked at some of the other injuries and knocks and stuff that we've got. Uh, Martin Dubravka, there was a little bit of confusion around him. He is fit and available. Uh, some sort of medical -y condition that he's had. Tonsillitis, I've heard mentioned, blah, blah, blah. Look, top bottom of it is, is he should be absolutely a OK. Back in training, available for this weekend, as should Fabian Cher be. He was sent home from the international game uh, for Switzerland. Um, that would be a great shame for him. I'm no, I, I no doubt he would have wanted to have been playing in those games. He's been sent back. He's responded to treatment. He's carried a knock all season, they've said. Uh, but he's going to be available. Uh, and uh, no doubt he will be one of the first names on the team sheet uh, You know, for Newcastle against Spurs. So great uh, to know that uh, Fabian Cher is OK. Martin Dubravka is OK as well. Plenty of different op options. You've got Jamal Lascelles pushing... Uh, you've got Dan Byrne pushing at the back. So lots of um, different combinations, formations, systems that you can go with. John Joe Shelby is back into training, but not full training. He's training and then missing a day and training and missing a day. But again, you know, speaking and listening to what um, Eddie Howe was saying, I think he was suggesting that at, at worst a place on the bench, but... Uh, I'd be surprised if uh, John Joe Shelby isn't back. Because, you know, I think we just look under Eddie Howe with the fitness and everything else like that as it is now we look at different animals different gravy with John Joe Shelby back in spraying the balls around and this new John Joe Shelby sprinting backwards um, providing you know cover last that, that you know last ditch tackles and uh, so forth it's fantastic to see so John Joe Shelby should be back 
and available. And look, we've got to go down with the same sort of mindset and application that we went down to the Chelsea game with. We were so unlucky there. We were fucking shafted um, by the referees. And it's a shame that I can say that. I, I won't get fined. But Isaac Hayden got fined 19 grand for speaking the truth. Yet the people uh, who uh, are glaring uh, errors in their job, in their performance, absolutely have nothing. But they, they just get protected. It boils my piss. We want footballers to be able to communicate, be real, not give PR, PR answers and, and have that relationship with the fans. The moment that they do and make a slight comment, bang, 19 grand easy as and I mean no it's not a lot a lot of money probably for a for a Premier League footballer but it's the principle of the matter Isaac Hayden was only stating the bastard truth and you get fined for stating the, the you know the honest truth it's beyond a joke and Eddie I touched on it before saying look you know when we were getting decisions against us all of the time I complained I received a letter back and again, no action against these incompetent referees. They're like Mr. Fucking Magoo running around, not being able to see the fucking nose and the end of the face. Uh, shocking, absolutely shocking. Um, but again, nothing, nothing at all done against them. But the slightest, the slightest of tongue in cheek comment, and it's bang, there you go. And it's got to be wrong. The referees, the. It needs to be looked at because across the board, they're shite. They're absolutely shite. They were better when they were part time back in the day. Um, but now they've gone sort of, you know, full time professionals and stuff like this. I don't know. Um, it seems to have gone to the head. Uh, you know, <laughs> it really does it. It it they're like attention whores on the on the pitches, you know, and um, it has to stop. It has to fucking stop. But common sense should have uh, prevailed. He was only to speaking the truth. They know it. We know it. The world fucking knows it. So why they find them, I just don't know. Uh, breach, bring the game into distribute, whatever you want to say. It's a load of horseshit. It really, really is. Fucking grinds my fucking gears totally. Um, but that's what it is. He'll have paid his fine and we move on. Uh, nice to see Isaac Hayden uh, still involved around the first team, despite obviously not being registered for uh, action this, you know, this half of the season. So... I'm still feeling really positive and looking forward to the game. It's going to be a difficult one, no doubt about it, but I think Newcastle are capable of going down there, scoring and getting something out of the game, most definitely. Spurs are inconsistent. You know, one moment you look at them and you think, oh, fantastic, talented groups and great players. Uh, and then over times you're like, what the fuck actually just happened there as they end up getting turned over by somebody, you know, towards the bottom of the table. So very, very inconsistent, up and down, like a Prozzi's knickers, to be honest. Um, it's a little bit embarrassing, uh, their form with the money, the outlay, the stadium, everything else that they've got going for the club. But we're looking at it on a Newcastle perspective. I think we're capable of going, uh, you know, down there, getting something, a win. And you would say, surely, surely the God, we're about done. Uh, but as I said before, a game or two, another win or two, that that could and should be enough. Fingers crossed the first three points comes this week. And I know the Spurs supporters won't want that. Uh, they're chasing down, obviously, European football and stuff like that. Uh, that's for another season for Newcastle to dream on do. Uh, this season is just about finishing it properly, finishing it correctly, not making any stupid mistakes that pulls us back into the relegation uh, trouble. Um, Surely our one gaffe, our one mistake was the last time out against Everton. No more of that. Let me know what you think the score's going to be down below. Who's going to start? Uh, will he risk John Joe Shelby back in from the start? Let me know what you think down below in the comment section. And in the meantime, take care, keep it tuned, subscribe, and I'll speak to you later. <laughs>